What is the effect of workplace bullying on society? Does the term going postal mean anything to you? The term going postal originates from one of the first workplace mass shootings in the U.S. in 1986, six years after Ronald Reagan was elected and the United States government began criminally underfunding public services such as, for example, the post office. Despite all the hysteria in the media, mass shootings remain relatively rare compared to all the other gun violence in this country, and workplace mass shootings are rarer still. But they do happen, and when they do, though I don't have a lot of money from almost three decades of being bullied out of the workplace, I would bet actual literal money that bullying was a factor every single time. Reaching for a gun is never an appropriate response to workplace bullying, but unfortunately it has been a response. We do know that workplace bullying can lead to suicide on the part of the target. The ultimate result of workplace bullying can also be homicide in the form of mass shooting, as in death as in death with a capital D. So workplace bullying is a matter of life and death. And I think that is about as serious as a heart attack. Every time there is a mass shooting in this country, I am consistently amazed, not at the violence, but at the abject stupidity of the responses. There's all this hand-wringing about this senseless violence. And here we go again with the regular gun control debate. If there's any commentary at all about the psychology of the shooter, it was that he was just crazy and then suddenly for some reason that no one can comprehend just snapped. If it's a workplace mass shooting, the shooter was, wait for it, disgruntled. If I have to hear the word disgruntled one more time, I'm going to go postal. Yes. Anyone who commits murder is by definition clinically insane, but it is the mental illness of the shooters, their difference in a hateful, mean-spirited, bigoted, intolerant, abusive, and bullying culture that gets them bullied in the first place. Can we ever evolve beyond just a sick person who lost it? What did the shooters go through that drove them to homicide in the first place? Again, especially when it comes to workplace and school shootings, I would bet money that the shooters were victims of bullying themselves and that some of the people that they shot were the bullies. No psychologically healthy person in the history of human civilization has ever murdered anyone, and no psychologically healthy adult has ever bullied anyone either. Yes, mass shooters have mental health problems. So do bullies. If you are a non-narcissist and non-bully and normal, sane, decent human being, you would be absolutely mortified if you ever behaved like any of these people. You wouldn't dream of acting like them in a million years. One of my theories about workplace bullying is that it is a form of narcissistic abuse. Another one of my theories is that bullying is an addiction. Both narcissistic personality disorder and addictions are listed in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the Bible of American Psychology. So workplace bullies are, by definition, mentally ill. I'm really grateful to politicians like Bernie Sanders who have attempted to reframe the discussion about violence in this country to what it really is. It is a mental health issue. But what about the mental illnesses of the bullies? What about their untreated narcissism and addictions? Their immaturity and insecurity, their superficiality and emptiness, their completely unhealed and unresolved childhood emotional trauma and wounding, their rape, incest, molestation, sexual, physical, verbal, emotional, psychological abuse, abandonment, and neglect, or just total invalidation. Can we talk about what has made bullies so freaking miserable that the only way that they can feel good about themselves or feel anything at all is by by picking on someone who's different. Did anyone ever think to address the mental health problems of bullies before they drove their victims to madness? Could have saved a lot of lives. You wanna know what the number one response to workplace shootings is? Metal detectors. Lawyer up, circle the wagons, batten down the hatches, go on the defensive to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. 4 p.m. on a Friday. Sound familiar? That's when they fire you. Why do they do that? So you don't get mad. 
go away for the weekend and cool off so you don't come back with a gun, as though one weekend of unemployment is going to undo decades of being bullied in the workplace. Meanwhile, absolutely nothing is ever done to address the decay within. Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. As we say in astrology, as above, so below. The weak, cowardly, and emotionally illiterate bosses in a workplace bullying environment love to pretend that they are above it all, but somebody hired all of these people in the first place. I find it interesting that in addition to their metal detectors and very expensive attorney's fees, employers like to invest in wellness programs full of loads of processed American junk food filled with known poisons, which is perfectly appropriate for a toxic workplace environment, and gym memberships. You can go burn off all of those empty calories, all while absolutely nothing is ever done to address the psychological well-being of the employees. Apparently, in the minds of most employers, employee retention amounts to nothing more than empty gestures like Starbucks cards. I also find it sad that millions of nerds like to load up on guns and pretend they're cops because everyone wants to be the hero and the tough guy who gets to take out the active shooter while not one of them ever had the courage to stand up to bullies in the first place. So we can talk about guns until we're blue in the face. Nothing will ever be done to stop the violence in this country until something is done about the bullying. Long story short, it is not the guns. It's the bullying stupid. So that's a summary of the effect of workplace bullying on society. If you'd like to read more, I've written an essay on workplace bullying. I include that information in the description. The reason that I create this video series is to establish a forum where targets of workplace bullying can share their stories and experiences in a kind of support group. So you can know, number one, you're not crazy. Workplace bullying is real and your feelings are perfectly valid and justified. And number two, you're not alone. Unfortunately, countless others have experienced the same thing. So I look forward to reading your comments and I'll try to respond. Take care.